The Bulk Create tool in Canva. What is it? Where can you find it? How do you use it? And what are some good workflow tips as well as some pitfalls to watch out for? Let's get into all of that as we work through a few examples. Okay, so for the first example here, imagine you're running a conference or something and you're in charge of designing name tags for everyone. Uh, you're going to have a really repetitive design where you want the design to be basically the same every time. But then, of course, there is going to be that variable item in the name of the name that's in there. And maybe you have a picture on your name tag, possibly. So those are two things that are going to change, but pretty much everything else is the same. So you don't want to create this design over and over again. Wouldn't it be nice if something could do all the work for you and all you had to do is create the design once and then just point to the names in the photos? OK, well, with this bulk create tool in Canva, we're going to be able to do this now obviously you are gonna have to match up photos uh, and names so it's not perfect but of course you could do this without the photo so then it really would just look at a file and then bring in all the names automatically but let's walk through this and I'm gonna keep the photo in there just so you can see how you can have a photo automatically populate multiple designs as well so let's walk through this bulk create tool okay so you can see it right here over in the left menu but as you may or may not know inside of Canva by default all the way down through the apps tab these are always going to show in your left menu on desktop however below that some of these things uh, you can delete so if you just click on these things below you'll see an x shows up now if i go above that on projects and things like that i don't get an x because those are sort of per permanently part of the menu at least how canva has it set uh, set up now but i go over to bulk create you can actually get rid of this and so i'm going to get rid of this because you may not see that initially you may not see that bulk create tool so how do you find it well, when you're looking for extra things like this in Canva, what you want to do is go under this Apps tab. So if I click under the Apps tab, uh, and so I searched for it before, let me just get rid of that, that though. So you can come down here and you'll find different categories. So you can go through and search for something you might want to use. Or if you know the name of something and you know it exists, you can come up here and you can search. So I'll just start to type in Bulk Create. I don't have to type in the whole thing. I'll just type in Bulk and then there it is. Boom, I can hit plus to start using it. And when I do, you can see now it appears over in this left menu. Now it'll probably stay here until you exit out, but if you ever lose it, just remember you can come in under this apps tab and you can find it again. Now I've switched to another version of my design here that just has a name. We're still gonna go through this uh, example with the image, but there is one quirk that comes into play when you're doing something like text and an image. So I'm gonna talk about that, but first let's just go through the simpler example here where we just wanna do a name. Okay, so step one, you're always gonna get this add your data as step one. And that's going to be where you can either enter your data manually or you can upload by CSV. So if you just have all your file, uh, file names in a CSV, and again, CSV just stands for comma separated values. So lots of programs like Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, they let you export a list as a comma separated list. And so that's what this is sort of looking for to start with. So if I jump over to Google Sheets, uh, here's the list of names I want to bring in. Now, the first thing for you to watch for is it does expect you to have a header. So it, it's gonna read Samantha Martinez as that header if we don't put another value in here. So I'm just gonna right click, I'm gonna sort of row, a row above and we'll just call this name, okay? Now, uh, we're also gonna want an image in our second example, but we'll talk about that in a minute and while putting, why putting image in here is not gonna work, uh, but we're gonna start by just going through this name example. So now we have our name, we have our 10 names. And so now what we wanna do is just export this as that file, uh, as that comma separated values. So we'll just come under download. You're gonna look for this comma separated values. And again, you can do this in a lot of different uh, a lot of different documents, even a basic text editor, you can usually export things as comma separated values. So we'll just go ahead and we'll call that names. I have it in here already. I'll just overwrite that. You wanna replace this? Yes. Okay, so now I have my list of names as a comma separated value. So then back over in Canva, I'm just gonna use this upload CSV option. And then it's gonna ask where it is. I'm gonna to point to it. And now it's gonna have those names in here. And you can see Samantha Martinez, Tyler Johnson. So it brought in that list of names. Now I only brought in 10 here, but imagine how much time this could potentially save you if you had like a list of 500 names and you wanted to create 500 versions of this design, but you didn't wanna retype out the name all those times, you know, this could really save you a ton of time. So now that we have it in here, this next step is to connect it up. So we have the list of names now, but it doesn't know where in your design you want it wants those names to go so i'm going to come over here and i'm going to click on this value here because this is sort of my placeholder where i want the names to go and i'm going to click on this and we're going to come under this and find connect data so again i just went under the three dots here i came down to this menu i found connect data and now you can see we see name as option since that was one of the fields in that comma separated spreadsheet that we brought in 
it recognizes that header so now I'm going to come under here I'm going to choose name and we'll see how this changed to name now here's one thing to consider though watch what happens if I grab just the edges of this and as I do I'm going to hold down the alt key just so every if I don't hold down the alt key it'll resize from this side so I'm going to hit control Z because I want to keep this centered where I have it centered so if I hold down the alt key and start to bring it in if I bring it in far enough we see it then expands you know two lines so what I have to keep in mind here is that if I have it like this and I have a name like Samantha Martinez it's going to definitely end up spanning multiple lines well I don't want it to span multiple lines so I'm actually going to hold down the alt key and I'm going to drag this out even farther uh, so that I have more room and it's still centered it's center aligned so it's going to be center aligned here but I've given it more space. Now the other thing you could do at this point too, if you, if you know this font size is just gonna be too big, you could come in here and you could change this down, make it a little smaller, whatever you need to do. So you're thinking ahead now for what's gonna work and what's gonna save you time. Because you can always come back after all these designs are spawned and make little adjustments, but the more you can get right now, the more time you save, okay? So there we do, we have hello my name is, and now we know it's gonna replace name with everything in that spreadsheet. So then step three, if you just hit continue here, then it's gonna show you sort of everything you wanna do. Create pages based on the data you entered, select all. So you could turn some of these off if you didn't need them, but you're probably gonna use them if you brought them in. And so now you have this generate 10 pages, it's gonna take those 10 values in our spreadsheet and it's automatically gonna generate copies of this page where we connect it up our comma separated list. So if I go ahead and hit click generate 10 pages now, it's gonna spawn a new design in Canva. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna build out those pages based on everything we have. So now we can see that we have Samantha Martinez and then we have, uh, this. okay, so what it did is since I had two pages in my initial design, it's always copying that second page. So, so normally you wouldn't have the second page, but since I'm going to show you a second example, it also brought that over. Now you notice this did not change in the uh, second one because I didn't connect anything up on that second page of my design. That's why I have a second page. You would not have a second page. And I'll show you in my next example by getting rid of that page, how you're not going to have extra pages. But that's just because over here in my original design where I did this, I also have the second page because I'm going to show you this example as well. Okay, so it actually spawned uh, 20 pages here, but only the 10 are going to have the names here. So Tyler Johnson, if I go down farther, Olivia Lee. I can see that it built out all of these on the fly using that bulk create, just connecting it up to that name value in our spreadsheet. Okay, so let's go through the more complicated example here of this, this one here where we have the picture. So I'll go ahead now and I'll delete this first page because again, we're just gonna have the one page this time and that way when we, we spawn these this time, we won't have all those extra feel, all those extra pages, okay? So now let's imagine we're gonna use this. We wanna connect up the name, but now we also want to connect up a picture. So how do we handle this version? Okay, so I can actually go backwards here. I can actually use this arrow here to go back to the beginning of this process here. Uh, and when I jump into it now, if I do enter data manually, you're gonna see that it has all the data we just did. But I'm gonna go ahead and clear the table just so we're starting from scratch. But that's helpful to know uh, if I hit cancel here and I were to jump back in this, even if I were to go somewhere else and sort of be outside of this tool, when I come back in this tool and when I hit this button here, it's usually gonna remember the data you just had in it. Now, since I cleared the table, uh, it's gotten rid of everything, but usually it sort of remembers what you have in here if you don't hit clear table. So sometimes that can save you time sort of when you're jumping back and forth and you decide you wanna add something else, but you wanna preserve what you've already brought in here. Okay, but let's go through this example now. Let me quit out of this for just a second. Let's go through this example where we wanna bring in a picture and not just our name. Okay, so first jumping back over to that spreadsheet. Imagine that you do have all the names in the spreadsheet. Now I'm working through an example where we just have 10 names, but imagine if you had 200 names, even if you have to manually sort of connect the pictures, you would not have to, you would not want to have to enter all 200 names if you didn't have to, okay? 
Well, the bad news is you can't just bring in this CSV automatically anymore because even if I type name here, it's going to get confused. Or excuse me, even if I type image here, it's going to get confused. It's going to think this is another text column. And so if I were to just bring this in here, let me just show you. Let's go ahead and hit file. Let's go ahead and download this. We're going to do comma separated values. I'm going to rewrite that file we just did. We're going to call it names again. Replace it, yes. And now let me just jump back over here into here and let me just show you if I upload that CSV and I choose names here's what's gonna happen it's boom it's automatically gonna jump to that second step but it thinks this is a text field and it thinks this is a text field also if you want to manually uh, excuse me if you want to automatically upload a CSV anything in there it's gonna think it's a text field if you want to do an image you have to manually upload uh, uh, things from the beginning. So let me just show you what I mean by manual is right here. You have to enter data manually. So you're probably thinking I'm going to lose all my work if I already have the text in a spreadsheet. Well, no, no, there's still a workaround for that. So if I come in here now, enter manually because I know I want to have an image column and here's my image option. But first, let's take care of this text here. I have it all here. All you have to really do is come into your spreadsheet, copy it, and then if you hit Control C, that would be Command C on a Mac, or you can, you know, right click or go under Edit and choose Copy. If you do that, and then you come over back to your Bulk Create tool, and you just go to that first column, and then you choose Paste. So I could right click and choose Paste. I could hit Control V, which is my keyboard shortcut here. It's smart enough to know that the those fields that I copied from that spreadsheet go into different columns okay so even though we're manually entering it you can still uh, have the work done automatically where you don't have to each individual column you don't have to type out the names so that saves you a lot of time now we're going to call that name again so we're going to give it a name up here just so we'll be able to see it in the next step and then we're also going to add an image and we're going to call this image now when you add an image we have to point to where we have the images stored okay so i'm going to go ahead and i'm just going to close out of this for a minute we'll come back to this but let me just show you that here under my let's see i think i have a folder here actually let me upload them again let me show you the whole process because it might be helpful you for you to see the whole workflow so what i'll do is i'll just ju jump over to my uploads now presumably if you're doing something like this you would have those photos when people registered you'd have things organized so we're just going to go ahead and click upload and then you would navigate to that folder where you have all the people uh, all the headshots so i'm just going to upload these 10 images so i'll just select them all shift click to select them all i'm going to go ahead and click open they're all going to get uploaded here the canva under my upload so we'll just wait a minute for these to upload real quick so there we are everything is finished uploading now to, to make this next step easier and because if we ever want to use these again uh, together i usually like to group things immediately as i bring them into uh, canva to keep them organized i usually like to move them to folders that make sense so i'm going to go ahead and select everything here and we can see with 10 selected down here i can move to a folder so i'm going to move to a folder i'm just going to call this headshots Again, call it whatever is appropriate, but headshots might make sense if these were headshots for a conference. If I didn't have that folder, it's just searching for it. So actually what I wanted to do is create new. So let me just hit create new. And now I'm naming the folder headshots. And we're going to add to that folder. Boom. Add the new folder. Boom. So they've all been added to that folder. It's moving that folder, uh, those items to that folder now. And now we can make use of this folder in this next step so that when we search for these images to pair them up, we can do so quickly. Okay, so now we're ready to jump back into that bulk create tool. So let me go back here, still on the left menu. We're going to go ahead and enter data manually. You'll notice that yes, even though we jumped out of it, it kept all those names in here. So now all we need to do is connect up this image field with the values uh, of those headshots we just brought in. So if I go ahead and click anywhere in here, it's going to then have me search for that. So what I want to do is I want to just go down and find that headshots folder. There it is. And now I'm going to come in here and connect these up now normally your photo your, your you know your photos would probably be named with the person you know so it would make it easier connecting these up but since i'm just sort of doing this randomly i'm not worrying about matching up the names uh, with the actual pictures for this example so i'm just going to come in here and get different pictures i might be mixing up gender and other things in here but that's okay we're not gonna worry about that this is just an example so i'm just going to go through here and then really quickly just populate out these but again if you're doing that some that's just something to keep in mind when you're bringing in assets that you have them named in such a way that you can then connect things up quickly in here 
Now it looks like I've duplicated a couple in here. Let's see, I got this guy in here twice. So there we go. Now I think I have all different photos in here. Well, I don't. I, I duplicated one here. So let's see, which photo did I miss? Uh, I think I missed this one. So there we go. I think I have all different photos in here. But again, this is just an example. So it doesn't matter if I get this exactly right. But once you have your names, once you have your images, we can go ahead and click done, right? Now we have the data in here. We have the images and we have the names, but we still need to connect it up to our design so that when we generate these uh, copies of this you know, design, it knows where to put these assets. So what we're gonna do is click over on our name. Again, remember clicked over, then use these three dots and we're gonna connect data. We'll go ahead and hit connect name. And so again, remember, make use of this in a smart way to give it as much space as possible. I might not want to go like that because I don't want it to butt up right against, but I'm going to make it a little bigger in case my name is bigger. And then over here, we're going to click on this frame. So again, you're going to need to use a frame element for this when you're connecting up an image. Image. So I just searched for a frame. I bought a, brought a frame in here. Now that I click on this frame, I can again right click. I can go down. Actually, let me try this again. Click on the frame. And now for some reason, it doesn't want to connect up. You know what? Maybe this is a grid here. Let me just see. Uh, this is a grid. I can tell because this is actually something that's I can resize. And this is something that's good for you to know. You cannot use the this data connection with a grid. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that grid. And I'll just come back into my elements. And again, it, it's going to keep all my data in there. But now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to type in uh, portrait frame just so I get the size I want sort of. And let's just go in here under frames. So this frame right here should work. So I'll just bring this one in here. And actually, let me delete that for a second. Let me just see all here. Let me just come in here. Some of these have a border, some of them don't. Again, these are little details you can worry about. Uh, but I'm just gonna bring this over. And again, I'm just replacing my background here. Let me just resize this. And again, now I have this space below this. so. You would have to come in here and figure out how to tweak this. You know, do I want this just down farther? But find what works for you. And again, get as many of these things right as you can up front so that you don't have to change this on, on 10 different versions of this, right? You want to get it right now. But this looks good enough, so let's go with this. Now, since this is a frame and I go under these three dots, now I do have the connect data option and we're going to use that image. Now, I'm going to go ahead and you not you notice that it let me connect the data even though I'm no longer under bulk create it's still working but let's go back under the menu and we can see that yes now they're both connected uh, we know they're both connected is because I'm seeing this blue check mark this blue purple check mark here you want to see that that lets you know that you've connected up these fields in your data with some part of your design once you have all these check marks and everything's connected up that's what we're going to continue and that's what we're going to generate the different versions of this design okay so again you can check off different ones you don't want to have happen but we want all of these to be created so go ahead and click generate 10 pages and then it's going to launch that new file it's going to create the design with these 10 pages it's going to bring in the names it's going to bring in the pictures so the more you're doing it'll take a second here but it's going to bring them all in and look at this this is pretty cool so it is brought in all of the names and it is brought in all of the images now of course i wasn't worried about getting uh, exact names and images in here this is just an example so of course ethan this is probably not ethan uh but okay uh, this has worked and of course once you did this then you can come in here and so if you wanted to adjust this picture within the frame you could double click to get within that frame there so you could come in here and come in here and move the picture around in the frame and then click out and again i just double click to get into there but you could do the same thing by clicking and then if you go under edit photo and under the crop option, uh, just a little easier to double click, but you can also do this. And then remember you can come in here, you can size up, you can move it around. So you can still come in here and make any adjustments you need to make, uh, but you have everything in here now. So it just ends up saving you a lot of time, especially when you really are doing things in bulk. So this is bulk create, and this is really cool. Now remember the tricks we used, uh, images, bring them all in, Put them in a particular folder so you can easily get to them when you come to match them up with their uh, with their text. And then text items like this, if you're doing text in an image, then you're going to have to come to your spreadsheet. You're going to have to copy it, and then you're going to have to paste it back into that bulk create tool. But remember, under the bulk create, you can paste something, and it will fill out different columns. Okay, so let's go over one more example. 
In this example, let's pretend we're an animal shelter and maybe we're coming up with a social media campaign to promote the pets we have available for adoption, the value of having a pet. And so let's just launch some sort of social media thing. How about uh, an Instagram post? Let's say we wanted to feature each of our pets that we have. So maybe we have those pictures in a folder, but we're going to pair it with a quote. Uh, and, and maybe we don't have those quotes yet, but this is where we could use Canvas AI technology to help us come up with something that is appropriate. So let's just start in here with a very very basic template. So I'll just even do something like this. Now, this is where I want to stress. You want to get as many things right as you can up front, because again, if you're going to create 10 copies of this, then for each copy, anything that you don't get right, you're going to be redoing that work again. So I'm going to get rid of these quotes because I don't think I'm going to need these quotes. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need this box here. Let's just make it really simple. So we have this here and I'm actually going to make, this is where our quote's going to go, but I'm going to make this a little smaller. So let's size it down to, let's try 56. I think we go a little bit bigger than that. So maybe 72. So we'll try 72. And then I also I want to think about how it's going to fill the page and all of that. But first things first, uh, we're going to have a, a frame again in the background. So let's go under elements. I'm going to type in square frame. Because remember, we need to have a frame and not a grid. Uh, so we're going to use a frame here, and we'll just have this one basically fill the whole screen here. So we'll go ahead and we'll drag that out from corner to corner. The quote's going to be somewhere in here. Uh, and then we're going to have sort of uh, images of our pets. So let's just go under our project folder, projects folder. And then somewhere in here, I created a folder called dogs. And so we're just pretending that these 10 guys here are up for adoption. But this is just to get you thinking about hmm, what maybe could you do for your brand, for your business. So I have these 10 guys here. So I know that's going to be one thing. They're going to go into this frame here. And then I know I'm going to have a quote here. Uh, and then let's think about that. We could have a name, sort of name for the pet. So let me go under elements again. And I'm going to type in name tag. So name tag, so name tag. Let's just search for a simple graphic. So let's see all these graphics here. Something real simple. So how about this guy here? And we'll bring him up to the top, right? We'll get him centered. And then we want some text to go in there. So we'll go under text. We'll sort of add a little heading. This is where the name of our guy is gonna be. Again, we can see that that's gonna be way too big. So we wanna size it down. That might work, so let's bring that up but this is curved text okay so i want it to be curved so let's go under the effects menu and let's go under curve here and we'll adjust this curve just so it fits slightly curved up there and so, so that's going to be our placeholder for the name of our pet and then we have a quote here but of course we need our quotes and this is where we're going to use some ai technology so inside of any uh, canva doc here you can come down here and you can come to this little Canva assistant, which let me show you, you can also get by just using the forward slash on your keyboard. That'll bring up this little menu. You have this magic right tool. This is what we're gonna use. So let me type something like, uh, could you write 10 quotes about pets that highlight their value and the uh, love we have for them something like that something simple and then it's going to go to work for you again this is just something you can adjust these you can do whatever but this is a way to generate content quickly and again uh, just have it do some work for you so then I'm going to take these and I'm going to copy all of these right here so I'm copying control C and I just want to show you that you can paste these directly now into that bulk create tool so let me just bring up this bulk create tool we're gonna enter data manually. We wanna just clear the table. This first one here, we're gonna call name because this will end up being the pet's name. Then I'm gonna add some text here. This is gonna be our quote field. And so I'll come down here. And in this first one, now that I'm on this first one, remember I just copied all those quotes. I'm gonna hit control V and they're all gonna get pasted into these individual uh, columns here. Now I also wanna have an image because this is gonna be the image of our pet. And now for name here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. So I'm actually just going to make these up. Uh, but you can imagine you would have actual names to go along with your pets. So Fido, Biscuit. And you don't have to watch me type this out. I will skip ahead now just so you don't have to watch all this. All right, so I have my names typed out. Then, of course, you would go in and you would want to connect up all your images. So we'd go and we'd find that dog's folder. And we would come in here and again, you would have them named more appropriately here so you can match them up. But this is just an example. So I'll just go quickly through here 
and just put a different dog in each of these columns. Again, you don't have to watch me do this, so I'll skip ahead now. Okay, I have all my images connected up, so I'll click Done now. And then remember, we have to connect everything up here now. Now, I don't need these quotes anymore because now I have them on my, my table. So you could have these copied somewhere else if you wanted to just keep track of them. But I'm just going to go ahead and delete those because we should not need those anymore. Uh, but now we need to connect things up. So in our frame, I'm going to click on our frame, and then I'm going to right-click and hit Connect Data. That's going to be our image. This one here is going to be our quote, so I'll click on that, and then I'm going to choose Quote. Now, you have to I'll connect data and quote, and then let me come up here again, connect data and name. Now, I, I can't stress this part enough, is you have to think about how things are going to work. If I have this positioned here, and I had it left aligned, that's not going to work quite the way I wanted it to, right? And if I wanted this to be center aligned, uh, and I had went in under here under spacing and I had anchored from the top then it's going to size just downward if I want to have equal space you know built on both sides so it stayed center I need to have this center anchor position so you have to think about these things and make sure you're setting them up appropriately but I actually think I might move this to the bottom of the page so let me actually use this anchor position here and just drag it down so now I know that right here this is the highest it's going to be on this this part of the screen. It's never going to take up. Uh, it's never going to be moved up here, right? Because of this anchor position that I have set now. This tells you where your text is anchored. So now, if I build out a carriage return and go to another line, if my quote takes up two line two lines, it's going to be this line here and then a line below. Okay, that's how the anchor box works. So you just have to think about these elements when you're building things out in bulk like that because it's going to be really important. Now, I actually know it. There's one more thing I want to do, but I'm going to go ahead move forward because I have all these connected now just to show you you can come back and do this multiple times so I'm going to hit continue I want to do all these but for a moment I'm going to turn off the select R and I'm just going to turn on two just as a little test and I'll go ahead and generate these two pages so when I do that it's going to build out those two files again I'm going to do them all but I just want to show you how you can sort of get a preview by looking at a couple of them without having Canva do all the work, okay? So immediately I could say, hmm, my text is either too big here because this one really built out and went multiple lines. This one came out okay, but then the, the coloring's not great uh, and I need something in the background here. So that was just a little test to see what sort of changes I might wanna make. And I can jump back over to this one here. And so for my quote, I can say, okay, let's make this a little smaller. Let's make it maybe 56. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key while I size out the handles, just so it also will span a little bit more of the page. Uh, and then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the R key. Well, actually, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, let's change the color of this to a white. Uh, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of a black overlay so that it'll show better above, uh, you know, above the image. And actually, I might actually bring it down a little bit because now that I made the size smaller, I think I can get it to fit here. But so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag out a rectangle. So I'm gonna hit R for my rectangle. If you wanna make sure that's behind your quote, it is here, but you can always come in here and you can come under the position menu. You can go under layers. You can say, okay, this rectangle is underneath the quote. Yeah, that's what I want. So what I'm gonna do with this rectangle is I want it to go sort of from the bottom of the page and I want it to go sort of up to the midpoint of my page and I want it to appear behind that quote. So that's roughly the midpoint there. Uh, but then let's make this black. And then what you can do is if you click on this again, or if I click on this, but also here you see the dots there. If I click in here, I can switch this to a gradient. So I want it to start as black, but then I actually want it to fade to transparent. And I can see it's not oriented the way I want it to be. So let me just, let me just rotate it. Bear with me here. So 90 degrees, again, I'll get it positioned so that it starts at the bottom, it makes its way up. So it's gonna be behind the quote, but then it's not going to bother the top of the page so much. So let's go like that. Um, and actually let's come in here and let's, no, that might work, but actually let me come in here cause I could add actually another layer of transparency there. Uh, and take it up maybe even a little farther like that. Let's try that, okay? So again, this is just where you can experiment around, find out what works. Uh, the name, I might make that white text too. And then let's make the name all caps. So if we click on this, it's gonna be all caps. And if we click on, click on this and we change it to white, there we go. I think that's about all we wanna do. Now I wanna select all. 
Now, even though I backed out, everything's still hooked up. So now I can just generate those pages again. It's going to launch a new file again. It's going to build these out. And this just shows you how you can sort of jump back and forth and tweak your design rather than going through and making the changes in all of the designs. Uh, so there's the first one. There's the second one. Uh, and so if I, it looks like maybe my quotes need to be pushed down a little bit on the, all these pages. Um, and again, you can do some of this work manually, but you could always go back to that initial step uh, and make the changes there if you really had a lot of, lot of, you know, a lot of designs. It's just which one's going to be more efficient for you. I could also come in individually and make little adjustments. Like maybe I wanted that to be a little smaller. I could bump it down. So you can make adjustments, right? You can make adjustments and you can go back and make adjustments on the template and then spawn all these designs. Or you can mainly come and say, that one looks good. This one, I'll move it down a little bit. This one, boom, this one. You're still saving a ton of time versus creating all these from scratch, right? So there you go. And now you would have some market, marketing assets. And like for this one, for example, this one's a little different. So you could even, you could even grab the quote and say, I wanna move it up on this one. And we're gonna switch it to black. We'll make it a little bit smaller. And so maybe I want this one to sit there, okay? So you can make all these adjustments, but you can still very quickly using this bulk create tool, generate a lot of assets without spending tons and tons of time. Is it gonna make them all perfect every time? No, but you can jump back and you can make adjustments here and then you can regenerate again so that most of them are looking pretty good. And then for those final ones, you may have to just come in here and make these little tweaks. Now, just remember, you still have access to all the other Canva tools and some of those can be used for bulk creation as well. So for example, if I didn't like the styling here, I mentioned I could go in here and make some changes, but I could make some changes across multiple pages and elements at the same time too. If I went under the design tab, for example, and I wanted to switch up the styles of my fonts, I could come under styles here. I could come under font sets. I could use see all. I could come under here and I could start to click some of these and apply changes to this page. And then of course I have this apply all option if I wanted to apply things to all pages. So let's just say, for example, I clicked on this one here. I was like, yeah, I like that the way that's working. That's working with my design. I could then do apply to all pages. And then once again, it's a way to do the work in bulk. And if I started to go through here, I could see that then that new styling has been applied to all of my pages, okay? But this is the bulk create tool inside of Canva. Make sure you check it out. Make sure you think about those instances for your brand, for your business, where you could potentially use this tool to save a lot of time. Hey, this is Greg. Thanks so much for checking out this video. You can give it a like below if you found it helpful and make sure you subscribe to this channel and set up notifications if you wanna stay up on all the latest information all about Canva. Thanks again and have an awesome day.